All right, today we're going to talk about training. Uh, and as such, we'll be encountering the first of many trigger words for families. Um, when we talk about training, it can conjure images of getting your pet to do what you want. For me, the idea of training takes me to my 16-year-old daughter and her friends who I've been coaching for over a decade now in soccer. Um, my history as a soccer player and, uh, and a teacher have probably come together to make me into a bit of a coaching nerd. Uh, I'm guilty of putting a, a lot of time into it, but I hope that I'm not like Will Ferrell from, from kicking and screaming. But there's an intensity to the preparation. Uh, each season, we begin with, with training camp. Uh, our team's called Wolves, and we have our Wolves training camp where we meet at Cliff Falls. We tell the parents in an email, look, they need to be here at this time and bring this stuff. And we run the trails to develop their fitness, and we do some team building activities just to prepare them for the season that's ahead. Now, for anyone who's coached before, uh, you know that there are some home runs when it comes to drills. There's some uh, games or training exercises, some drills that, that just work so well. And, and you, you kind of want to go to it all, all the time. And, and sometimes that can be beneficial, but sometimes it's just lazy. Now, now even the word drill is important. Uh, this represents something that we want to drill into our athletes. Uh, the more often they practice that skill or technique, the more naturally it's going to come back to them in a game situation. But coaching should be more than just keeping the kids entertaining or giving them what they like. Uh, it should be intentional, taking them from where they are to where you want them to be. This isn't typically done in a single training session, but rather over the course of weeks, months, and sometimes even over years. Similarly, we need to be intentional with our discipleship. Now, let me pause here for a second. You're going to hear me use terms like parenting and discipleship almost interchangeably for the next three months. In both cases, we're dealing with people who we love and care about, people who we want something better for. When it comes to both parenting and discipleship, this is the lesson that we want to give focus to today. Training may in fact be giving a doggy treat to your pup when he sits like you want him to. But training is also getting your hockey player to turn out of a corner with the puck uh, and, and to share their snack at school. Unfortunately, it's not simply just a matter of telling your kid what you want them to do in these situations. They're going to need to practice and they need you to be there to celebrate successes and correct shortcomings. When we train up our children and when we disciple a friend, we need to have this end goal in mind and have patience along the way, a, a, along the journey toward that goal. Okay, now it's time for our, our teachable moment. We're gonna take some time each week to bring you a group of Northridge parents and we're gonna present some scripture and we're gonna ask them some questions, sometimes one question, sometimes a couple questions. Anyways, you're, you're gonna see what I mean and I'll see you right after this teachable moment. Okay, everybody, welcome to week one of our Teachable Moments in the Getting There series. I am so excited about um, what we're about to bring to you. Uh, we've got the contributions of several uh, couples and people from our church who have some incredible and incredibly diverse parenting experiences. Uh, you'll also see they've got diverse parenting styles. There are so many different nuggets that you are going to pick up in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And I, I just feel like uh, it is a gift being given to you. So if you really want to go hardcore, grab a piece of paper and a pen and start taking notes because there's just some really neat ideas. All right, 
each week, um, the, uh, these parents have been given a verse and a question, or you'll see here, a series of questions. So here's the verse for this week, and we'll, we'll teach on this verse after. It's Proverbs 22, 6, and it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So that's the verse we gave them to kind of chew on. And here's the question we asked them. What do you think of when you hear the term, train up a child? And then the follow-up is, is, do you have any examples of when you've attempted to train up your child? Successes and failures are helpful. I've, I've been very clear with them. You know what? We don't want to hear just all the, all the good news about what great parents you are. Tell us the hard stuff. And you'll get lots of that over the next few weeks. Finally, uh, two more questions. Can you think of a time when you made a plan for discipline? Or, and, or follow up to that is, how did that work out for you? Um, so I'm really, again, hopeful that you'll be able to soak this up. Again, remember that all these parents are coming from different backgrounds and different perspectives, different ideas and ideologies for parenting. So glean what you can, listen with soft hearts and open ears, and be blessed. Well, in about grade two or three, our daughter did something that was not very nice to a classmate. And we made her go to the little girl's house and knock on the door to apologize. Unfortunately, she had to gather up the courage three separate times because there was no one home the first two times. She never forgot this incident and we still laugh about it now. And I guess we believed in uh, following through with consequences. But one um, attempt uh, that failed very miserably was when we tried to, to um, implement that the kids have the room stay clean. And so we thought we had a plan and we were going to have the kids, um, if, if anything was left on the floor, I could take it out and that they wouldn't have it anymore and just have to deal with it. Well, one of them got down to only sheets on their bed and um, no, nothing else. And, um, and then the other one discovered where I had hidden the stuff and they just went and got it. So it was total fail. It was actually quite hilarious. The kids <laughs> just didn't care that their rooms were naked. There was nothing in them. Yeah. They, would, they would go to sleep on, on the carpet on the floor with no bed sheets. <laughs> so we came to believe that it's probably that's the time of life for them just to feel like that's the one place they can be messy. So we just learned to close the door and let them live in their filth. The successful story that I wanted to share, to share is that in our training is that we taught our, our kids to love McDonald's restaurant. Every single Sunday, we'd take them there right after church and they would um, eat and we'd eat on the way home a lot of times. And, um, and then it was amazing because even after, long after the kids got uh, out of the house and married, that they started taking their kids. And when we started going to Northridge, um, lo and behold, we'd go to McDonald's with David and Carly and the kids and there was a whole bunch of other North Ridgers there and someone said well don't you know this is second church I don't know this train up a child always makes me think of when you talk about training it always makes me think of like back to the toddler years where you're doing um, potty training and teaching how to tie shoes like all the little tasks that everybody has to do we all have that in common no matter how we raise our kids you know faith-based or not we all teach our kids how to go potty and how to do those things and I remember being um a young mom and standing on the playground and and we didn't have a lot of friends at the time that had um kids when Caitlin was really little and I remember standing and coming home to Adam and sort of it was the first time I really realized um the comparing that went on and I was so I I, I think I don't know, sheltered, caught off guard. I was so surprised that it was like comparing how fast you were able to potty train your child or what age they did this or what. And I don't know, it just, it just really surprised, it just really um, surprised me, kind of made me sad, but. Um, hey, there's always been that, that statement I learned many, many years ago of, kids uh, go through phases and one of them is they're always dependent on their parents in the first part of their lives then they want to go into independence 
We all love that space. And then there's they move to interdependence where they love their parents and they're, well, not love their parents, excuse me, didn't mean it like that, but they realize how wise their parents are, but they also recognize that they can go and learn their own things. So our job as parents is to get them through those phases and give them the skills that they need to, to grow them up or teach them up. And so as a dad, how I looked at it is, is every opportunity that I had to help them, like if they wanted the ice cream at McDonald's, well, they had to pay for it at like 10 or 11, eight years old, somewhere in there, when I felt it was reasonable, but I, you have to set them up with the proper situations where they can succeed and you can give them proper, um, Skills, yeah. You can give them proper skills. Like we, Shanna was incredible at teaching the kids how to write emails to teachers. And we know there's a lot of teachers in the congregation, so please understand, we love you guys. But there are some teachers that are not as good at communication. And so we had to teach our kids how to have uncomfortable conversations through email or into discussions and how to get through that and improve their their communication skills so that they were ready in the workforce. Um, it's funny how the second kid learns because it's really funny our young, uh, youngest actually was doing it with behind our backs without us even knowing until we started seeing emails come up in her email that she was emailing teachers before we'd even really taught it. So FYI, um, it is true that 50% of the parenting um, <laughs> happens by osmosis when the other kids are watching. So, anyways, that's that's that was mine. Um, teaching, training up my kids was taking opportunities that are simple and easy in life, where you have to take the initiative and and push them in a safe way. You can do this. Love them and push them into it. I, the other part of this question is: Can you think of a time when you made a plan for discipline? No, I don't think. Um, I made a plan for discipline, but I think just being aware the purpose of what discipline is. It's not a it's not a pun it's not a punishment, and choosing to discipline um, so that we can um, teach or correct a form of behavior or um, discourage a behavior um, in a in a way, and um, sometimes having to take time to to do the discipline because you're too upset in the moment or and go back so that there is actually a purpose or a lesson. So I don't think a plan, but just knowing that that's the purpose behind it. Well, and we always approach discipline wasn't discipline. It was a, a consequence. There had to be a consequence to the decision that they made or the action that they made or whatever it was. There had to be an appropriate consequence and the consequence had to fit with the Training. Caleb just learned how to tie his shoes yeah. and uh, about riding their bikes in the driveway and things like that. They're doing okay. Uh, um, and we made that plan because Caleb used to come out of his bedroom like a million times at night and like slide down the stairs and back to your room. And so we, would, we had a conversation with him and like, you're going to come out, these are going to be the expectations. And it kind of worked. But he still comes out a million times. When I think of the phrase train up a child, I think of laying down rules as a parent. Um, I strongly feel that uh, children need to be instilled with a sense of obedience and respect um, from a very young age. Um, so setting down the rules and guiding your children to follow them and that helps them to understand what are the do's and don'ts as well as um, they get to understand what's the consequence of breaking those rules. So I think uh, this will also help them as they, you know, go out in the world and it'll help them as they get older. Um, and to me, the first thing that I think of is that I know that that came from the book of Proverbs, train up a child in the way that he should go. And the very first chapter of Proverbs says, that children should listen to the instructions of their father mm -hmm. and and of their mother. So the first thing, it has to be a team effort. And you have to be in agreement with one another. 
um, uh, all the time. You must always mm -hmm. be conscious of working on your own marriage so that you are yeah. presenting to your children a united front. And when I think of training up a child, I think of a direction of a train. And there's a certain way I want that train to go. I want my children to always be focused and going towards uh, things of the Lord, uh, to uh, be conscious of God in their life. So that involves um, going to Sunday school, going to church, uh, going to uh, be involved in kids' ministries at the church, youth, uh, mm -hmm. going to summer camp. Like, you know, grandparents, they don't need another Lego set. Maybe they need <laughs> money to go to summer camp. So those are all things I think parents uh, should consciously think about when they think about training mm -hmm. up a child in the way he should go. Okay, so how to train up a child. I definitely think of um, a few verses in the Bible. Um I think that for us, looking back over the years with our kids, the biggest thing has been consistency, which we were talking about before, um, and having a plan for discipline. And I think that's key too, right? It's not just off the whim, it's this is how we do it, uh, step by step. Um, and then we give our guidelines and then follow through with them. I also feel like it's a, a really big responsibility that um, obviously I don't think you're ever ready for it and it's something that you definitely continually have to seek God for all of those fruits of the spirits because parenting is probably the most rewarding thing you'll ever do but it also is the most challenging thing you'll ever do. For sure. For sure. Okay. So our uh, example for training one of our children, Declan, was um, last summer when we were, he finally was interested in, well, he wasn't so much interested at that point yet um, about learning to ride his bike without his training wheels. And so we don't have anywhere um, immediately in front of our house where he can go to ride and not have to have us hovering <laughs> over top of him and blocking cars. So we went up to a cul-de-sac close by, uh, over by my parents' place, and uh, thought that that might be a great opportunity for him to try and learn uh, without his training wheels. And so then what happened? So instead of actually wanting to ride without the training wheels, what he found was more fun was riding towards the curb and trying to hit the curb. And uh, so Shane kept saying you know if you keep hitting the curb like that you're gonna break the training wheels and then you will not have your training wheels and he, Declan refused to listen and uh, wanted to do what Declan wanted to do and hit the curb and broke the training wheels so um, as most kids would be he was upset and he was angry and so we got a bit of a temper tantrum out of that and he decided that he never wanted to ride a bike again um, and was, was just really angry that he couldn't ride it without the training wheels and that they were gone. And we had said, well, we're not replacing them now that you've broken them. It's time to move on from that. And uh, so basically though from that, Shane and I also learned we have to let our kids show us who they are and, um, and you have to respect who who they are as little people and when they're ready to do things. And so even though we felt he was ready to ride a bike without training wheels and thought, you know, all of our friends, their kids are riding bikes without training wheels and they're ready and he's he should be doing it by now. Let's, let's get this done and he can do it. Just because we know he can do it doesn't mean he's ready to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's one big thing that we have that our kids have taught us time and time again, mm -hmm. that um, as individuals, we, we, we're, we're all gonna get there, but we're gonna get there when we're ready to get there. And just because you're pushing and pushing and pushing um, as parents doesn't, doesn't mean that that's the right time. Yeah, and to like be very clear in that moment when we were at the cul-de-sac and when his training wheel broke, he was not able to ride his bike and no matter how many how many youtube videos we tried on how, helping to teach and stuff like that he just wasn't prepared and and uh didn't want to do it at that moment but then um on later date we went to a school with uh like the fake field fake grass over at westview there 
uh, and that convinced him that it was safer to fall on that than on the pavement, which is understandable. And um, then he got it after a couple trips to that field, mm -hmm. and then he's been riding his bike ever since. So just working with them and in that time and knowing their limitations and our own as the person that's training them. Um, well, I'll start first by saying that uh, we're not experts, but um, I've really been uh, introduced to the world of apologetics where we have been working really hard to train up Elliot and Ari in probably one day August in just the reasons why we believe what we believe because um, I think uh... our kids are growing up in a time where the world is very... Um, anti-Christian and people are biblically illiterate and so um, that's something that we've been trying to do I think more um, intentionally what about what would you say that's probably accurate yes <laughs> I think I'm gonna end up doing most of the talking <laughs> um, successes and failures I don't know that we could say we have a ton of success examples except that um, we've been trying really hard to teach our kids to be critical thinkers and that comes with failures too because then of course your kids start to um, question everything yeah they be qu they question everything which is good because we want our kids to be truth seekers we know that um, Christianity is true therefore we want them to seek the truth but um, yeah I think with that comes the challenge that your kids you know start to think um, critically about everything and they think they think for themselves too which is good you want your kids to do that I think but um, can we think of a time that we made a plan for discipline I think we do that on a daily basis I think we can think of lots of times where our plan failed yeah I think so too and I think um, I think we always plan for obviously for their discipline to work but it, it doesn't always work because everything is with kids can be really un unpredictable but we find that being really consistent and following through like when you say you're going to do something is usually um is usually the best plan so we we usually plan for that and uh yeah yeah and i think too one thing that's been really important for us is realizing that um not everything's going to work every time and to kind of adjust depending on the child because each one of our boys is obviously very different and um what what one of them might respond to the other one might not respond to at all so kind of it's been a bit of an exercise in patience and trying to figure out that combination of um just being consistent but also seeing um what's going to be effective um, in a way that we can maintain discipline but also ensure that our kids are thriving and that we're not being harsh with them. Yeah, I totally. I don't want to be like all um, angry all the time, um, although sometimes that feels like I'm always angry at my kids, but um, yeah, I think practicing the right level of grace and mercy is really important too and so much patience. And I think I'm always reminded by um, how patient and merciful and full of grace uh, God is towards us when I deal with my kids. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why parenting is uh, such a great illustration of our relationship with uh, God. Okay, I'll give my disclaimer at the beginning. I'm preaching a lot on this already, and so we're going to turn most of this over to Kara Lee for the first one. So first question is, uh, what do you think of when you hear train up a child? And do you have any examples of when you've attempted to train up your child? So when I hear the phrase train up your child, right away I'm just kind of dropped right back into that time of parenting our younger uh, our younger children, kind of toddlers and, and, and school ages and just how intentional um, I was about uh, kind of uh, sharing them, sharing with them about my faith and sharing with them about um, uh, just the the Bible and so there were so many things like books and and stories and movies and even just the bedtime routine so um, it, Yeah, I think right back to those those younger years when I think of train up a child well and following up on that can you think of any successes and failures that uh, 
that could be shared with other people. Yeah, and so I, I think that when I think back to those times, I, they were like it's they're very very fond memories and our kids were kind of cooperative and they were interested and and um uh like our the, the bedtime routine the the storytelling the praying the the singing like all of it is just they're they're really good memories um successes it's like i don't i don't know how you measure success with that and then kind of now as they're older i think it's it's become much harder to kind of think of measuring success because uh, now the, the training it's kind of it's in moments and it's not I can't be as uh, as scheduled and as routine with it it's kind of taking advantage of the moments as they pop out and so um, it feels like when they were younger and I, I felt like I was kind of doing my duties and and checking off what I thought was uh, a good mom and as a teen as teenagers it's uh, not as easy to measure those successes yeah but I will add um, it might not be as scheduled but you certainly seize the opportunities. When you know that that the entire family is going to be home for a meal or something like that, it's a non-negotiable. We're all going to sit around the dinner table, and um, I appreciate, probably figured it out too late, that it's how important it is to to set that time aside. That's good. Um, can you think of a time... Oh, no, we, we did that one. No, that one? Yeah. Okay. Can you think of a time when you made a plan for discipline? Um, yes, I've been kind of giggling all day thinking about this question because it, uh, with my boys, it was very, uh, discipline wasn't easy, but it wasn't, I didn't have to think on my feet very much, or I didn't have to, they didn't um, uh, kind of retaliate <laughs> to my discipline strategies, <laughs> but then um, with Emily, it really, it really changed, and so there were definite, I definitely had to put in some plans and strategies to deal with some of her um her strong will and some of her temper tantrums you wouldn't believe it today but it was um i i needed a plan for her and now again as the kids are older it's um uh, i don't again i don't necessarily feel like i i'm planning but when when different things arise i really uh put thought into if it's a battle that i want to fight and so i need to i kind of consider whether it's something that's worth the energy in putting into kind of with the follow-through do I want to make sure that it's a rule that we're all going to stick to? And um, that's kind of is something that guides my planning for discipline with that. Good. Okay. First, I can't not say something about the fact that my mom claims that her greatest parenting success was to train me to enjoy McDonald's. I don't know about that, Mom. Uh, that point aside, I am so thankful for the contributions from these parents. Over the weeks, I know that you're going to grow to love and admire and appreciate um, the nuggets of, of thoughtful responses and just how relatable and real they are. I could not have scripted a better array of different ideas and experiences. Our prayer is that you'll be blessed, uh, knowing that you're not parenting on an island. Uh, none of us become parents with any kind of experience other than that which we've learned when we were kids. In the same way, everything that we know about discipleship has been gleaned from our experiences as disciples. But to be clear, we want to offer you more than just some practical tips and tricks on parenting and discipleship. We want to chew on what God has to say to us. So let's take a moment to review the scripture for this week. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The semicolon in this sentence gives us this tidy division between what we're told to do, what we're meant to do, and the payoff for doing it. This proverb gives us clear instruction that we're meant to train our children to go in the way they should go. This is something that can cause some consternation with uh, us if we overthink things. Culture cringes at the notion of, of shaping our children. The preferred word picture is to, to give them wings and uh, allow them to find themselves. Uh, for the record, I'm not speaking against this attitude for, pairing, how, uh, for parenting. However, this should only happen after we've given our tools, the the, given, <laughs> given our tools, you know, sometimes they feel like tools, Some, given our kids the tools that they need for the journey they're about to embark, embark on. The very paradigm 
of parent teaching child, it just makes sense. I don't know about you, but I, I certainly went through an extended phase as a kid where I, I thought my parents knew nothing and that I knew everything. But the truth is that parents get to run through life ahead of their kids. There are literally zero children who are older than their biological parents. Think about that for a second. As parents, this gives us a helpful perspective. Whether the kids realize it or not in the moment is another matter altogether. Yes, there are some things that your kids are going to know more about than you do. As parents of kids between the ages of 16 and 20, uh, the list of stuff that they understand better than I do is growing daily and exponentially. But I brushed my teeth before they were born. I took care of a pet before they were born. I experienced love and heartbreak. I experienced taking a math test. Uh, I experienced playing in the big game and sitting through a job interview before they were even born. This perspective alone gives us some authority. More than that, God gives parents authority. Ephesians 6.1 says that children should obey their parents in the Lord for this is right. He says that it is right for parents to walk in authority over their children. Parents, I have, I have two important things to say about this authority. First, this is not a free pass to abuse that authority. We'll get into that a little bit more in the weeks to come. Second, do not shirk your responsibility to wield this authority. Parenting that is void of training, it's not cool, it's, it's a waste. You're holding, a ba you're holding back a gift that was meant for your kids. Essentially telling them to just go sort it out on their own. This brings us to the, the why of parenting. We do, we do it so that even when they are older, they will not depart from the way that they were taught to go. Here's the payoff that we hope and pray for. You're going to hear testimony after testimony from parents of adult children that their greatest joy is seeing their adult kids doing well, going the way that they should go. Now, just as I give time and attention to my soccer team so that they will grow into a successful team, we need to train with purpose when we parent and disciple. All right, that brings us to the end of week one of the Getting There series. Uh, my hope and prayer is that you will chew on that and that you will take away some nuggets that you can apply in your parenting and discipleship situations. Uh, for now, though, we're going to move on to something brand new. We have created a date for you. Now, don't let the term date throw you off. This is meant for families. This is meant for couples. This is meant for people going on a walk with God by themselves. Uh, we've prepared a, a place for you to go, and we've given you kind of an experience to walk through uh, on this little date. In the same way, every week since this whole COVID, start, cold COVID thing started, Tawny has been preparing for our students, these student experiences. And if you haven't checked them out before, you need to check them out now. Uh, they're clearly find, findable uh, as a link um, actually, we made it even easier. If you go to our, our website, nrchurch.ca, there's a button that says students. Click on that button and you're going to go to the menu of student experiences that Tawny has prepared for you. If you can't find it there, uh, if you look under our media section and you find this video there, under that is a link. It just says student experiences with the link. Click on that link and you'll find what was meant for your kids. Um, our prayer is that through these dates, through these student experiences, and through these getting their sermons, that you will grow in confidence as a parent, as a discipler. You will know what you've been called to do and will resource you just a little bit more for how you can do that more effectively. All these things we hope are, are done for the glory of God, to grow his kingdom, and uh, make him famous. Uh, church, I hope I run into you on one of these dates because I miss you. Uh, our family misses you guys. Um, but until we can be together face to face in person, we pray blessings on you and we look forward to that time where we can see you again. Until next week, see you later.